What would happen if I took the micro bit and made this cardboard pinball machine electronic? Every pinball game needs a theme. And I decided my theme would be Planet Winter to tell the story of a group of super smart penguin astronauts that got fed up with global warming and went to live on Planet Winter, where it's winter all the time. I built them an ice lake, a blizzard, a party igloo, a campfire, and even made an avalanche that hails extra pinball balls. I used the micro bit to easily add interactive lights, switches, motors, and a scoreboard using the make code block coding language. In this video, I'll show you how I built the game and share some considerations and troubleshooting that I went through as I built. Let's get started! Building the Pinbox Kit The video tutorial by Pinbox3000 made the build go very smoothly, so although there are written instructions, I highly recommend watching the video. One additional tip that I have is to use a ruler and a bone folder or the back of a pen to pre-crease the fold lines. This allowed me to fold the cardboard easily and have nice crisp folds. Choosing micro bit accessories. So to add some functionality to this micro bit, I looked through a few of these shields that I had. I decided to use two actually because I had two micro bits and the micro bits can talk via radio. So I decided to use the Brown Dog Gadgets board and the Pimeroni board. Uh, to use the Brown Dog Gadgets board to run servos off of these pins and make some switches using the LEGO compatible part and then use this scroll bit to use as a scoreboard. So I decided to use both and have the two micro bits communicate over radio so that this one could tally the score for you and then this one could display it. So I will have to use these in some other project and we're going with this. This is so cool. So when I'm touching this micro bit here, it's updating the score on the other micro bit. Come on, there it goes. Over radio. This is so cool. So I can have both of them going. I can use both of the shields that I got. So excited. Handmade switch techniques. I'm using these metal ball bearings as the pinball balls. Now I thought all I had to do is put a piece of copper tape with a little bit of a break in between the two pieces so that my ball would roll over it and connect the two and that would close the switch. But actually, if you look at the end of the sphere, you can see that it, it really doesn't complete the switch. It just has this very, very small footprint that rolls from one to the other. And although at some point there might be the tiniest, tiniest bit of connection, it wasn't enough to do anything uh, with the micro bit. So this didn't work. Uh, the other thing I thought was, hey, you know what? Maybe it's just the fact that the paper is so flat and I could use something spongy like this craft foam. And I had kind of the same problem where it would just not connect. So then I thought, okay, I need to get the gravity to touch both of these pieces of copper tape. So I created this little guy. Same problem, there's just not enough surface area on this complete sphere to really make a good connection every time. So what I wanted to do is make sure that 100% of the gravity from this heavy ball was going into the connecting of this circuit. And this is what I came up with. I ended up wrapping some maker tape around this piece of flexible metal wire. Now actually this metal wire is not conductive. So imagine that this was something that wasn't even made out of metal. Uh, so if I roll the ball this way now, it makes a really good connection because it's only touching the conductive surfaces. So the only thing that uh, is holding it up out of gravity is the thing that needs to conduct. And this is something that worked. Now, the ball of course doesn't always go perfectly over these two things, but I think that actually is about the amount of error that a normal pinball machine would have. I mean, you it's kind of a game of luck, you know, the ball may make a complete circuit or it may bounce slightly off to the right and not make that. Uh, so I think that's kind of 
th what I'm going for is something that's pretty real in gameplay. You have a little bit of luck and a little bit of strategy and a little bit of skill, and that's what makes it fun. So this is my new switch with my ball bearing. This one is for inside the blizzard, the little blizzard shoot. So the ball's gonna come in and hopefully connect. Making the penguins and design elements. I wanted the board to have a really big impact, so I decided to cut into the board itself to make the ice lake and backlight it with LEDs. After a coat of paint, I added some silver details and added a layer of craft plastic to act as the platform of the ice, while still being able to see through to the LEDs underneath. I constructed the igloo out of cardboard as well to keep with the cardboard theme and painted it to look like an igloo on the outside. I added some paper craft mountains with flowing streams and some metallic details on top. I illustrated the penguins on silver paper using black sharpie and then used a silver metallic sharpie to add back some details. I used colored paper and paint to make the beak and eyes and used craft plastic to make them some helmets so they could breathe in their spacey penguin pair. I used my Cricut Maker to cut 3D letters out of colorful cardstock and used a translucent paper in the center of the letter so that I could illuminate them from behind. Adding LEDs and motors. The NeoPixels go around a few times. I actually soldered individual pixels. You can see they're stuck underneath this tape here. And those are inside the little ice cubes on the front. Then there's a full strip going around the exterior and that illuminates the under ice section. And there's also a little strip stuck in here for the fire. For the switches, there's two switches, one that goes inside the igloo and you can see that there are two pieces of maker tape, one on one side of this rail and one on the other side of this rail. That will be a switch that when the ball rolls into the igloo, it gets stuck in this little cup and it closes the switch and then the motor will push the ball out. The other little trick that I have is this switch down here, which has some maker tape run along to the back. And when the ball falls through this hole, it will pass through and touch both of these little fins of maker tape and that will also close the switch. So we have two switch detectors built into the bottom here. It looks a little crazy, but that's kind of the nature of the beast. Putting it all together. So I have my micro bit board here and I've created a little shelf for it on the back of my Pinbox 3000. So this can go ahead and sit right here. And I have all of my wires coming from the playboard through this little back panel. This was a little cutout for making a two player game, but in my case, I used it to be an easy way to access all of my wires. Throughout building the design, I needed to remove the playboard many, many times. So creating a connection with alligator clips and these female connectors was definitely a smart way of going about doing it, making sure that everything is detachable. So I added a scroll bit on the front and I'm actually gonna use the coin slot to be a place to put this little battery. Ooh, there it goes. <laughs> Time to play! Launch your ball into Planet Winter and aim for the blizzard. If your ball gets sucked in, you get 10 points. But watch out for the crack in the ice lake. Falling through the ice will lose you those 10 points and your ball. But not all hope is lost. A ball falling through the ice will set off an avalanche giving you another ball in play. Use that ball to aim for the party igloo. Getting your ball into the igloo gets you 30 points and releases the ball avalanche as well. Shooting the ball towards the launch could give you another chance at launching through the blizzard. If you can rack up 100 points before losing your ball, you are officially the winner of Planet Winter. What would you do with a Pinbox 3000 and a micro bit? What I did in this project only scratches the surface of what can be done when you combine the cardboard engineering from this kit with all of the electronics abilities of the micro bit. So I'm so excited to see what other people do if they combine them. 
So if you do that, please comment on this video and tell me what you did. Or if you have more ideas for what I could have done, let me know. And be sure to check out the Pinbox 3000 website. Check out the product. It's so much fun. And it was such a boredom buster for me this winter to come up with all of these engineering solutions and create something that was really fun to play in the end. If you have more than one player, you can actually connect two of these together and have a battle mode. So if anyone wants to make the planet summer and battle my game, please do. Go check out Pinbox 3000. You're gonna have a blast building this. I wanna see what you made. And I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel as well. I do lots of tech craft crossover projects. Happy winter, and I'll see you next time.